It's really bonus. I'll do generic junk in it. Care Warner Summit Entertainment. All right, go ahead. Uh, so, Kara. who is who is Jack? Jack. Jack is you know he starts out as this street kid who he pickpockets people and. It's not the it's not the you know most morally sound thing to do in the world, but he, he has to do it to get by. He has no other way, and so he then has this opportunity to be part of something much bigger, and he becomes part of this group of magicians, uh, where the other members he has looked up to them for a long time, and they have no idea who he is. So he's trying to earn their respect throughout the film and prove to them that he is an equal, very similar to the way. That I came on set and I'm around these uh, brilliant actors who I've looked up to and they have no idea who I am. So I'm trying to show them like I belong here and that is that parallel. It's a good parallel. Pretty good. What what is the goal of these the magicians? What are they doing? What are they up to? The magicians are trying to uh, they're they're pulling off these Robin Hood type heists where they're they're taking money from these. These guys who are not, uh, again, don't have the best morals, and they are giving that money to people who those horrible people have slighted in the past. Very well, very good. What kind of what kind of notes does the film have? Can you, can you peg a genre for it? So um, it's it's hard to describe the genre of this movie because it is kind of a combination of the heist movie where you have this big ensemble cast pulling, uh, you know. Robbing banks, essentially, and then uh, combine that with the magic elements where uh, you think of a movie like The Prestige, and you combine those together, and a lot of the time when you're combining genres, it doesn't work. There's a reason why people don't attempt to do it, and a lot of the time it's a giant mess, but when it does work, it feels original, and it feels new, and uh, I just did a movie called Warm Bodies, which combined a lot of genres, and when it works, people, people are excited to... Um, you know, not just see another sequel or a remake. Like, this will be amongst a million of those this summer, and this kind of stands on its own as, like, something original. Yeah, Who do you think should see it? What's the audience payoff? I think, uh, I think it's got a, a pretty wide audience in, in the sense that, um, you know, I think the guys will be naturally, will naturally gravitate towards the heist element of it all. But I hear women are really liking it because... And tell me, tell me if I'm wrong, but like, uh, they love that there is like a real story there. And apparently, I've heard that like women are, are attracted to a, a, a great story. I don't know. I'm I'm talking out of my ass right now, but uh, but uh, I think I think it's got a wide reach. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. Uh, what for you was the most magical day on set? The most magical day on set was probably. Somewhere during that whole fight sequence when I realized that I was kicking the crap out of the Hulk, um, which no one else can say, I don't think. Not A lot yet. of people can say they beat up Mark Ruffalo. Actually, I don't know where I'm going with this. Next question. <laughs> We have t talk more about that that action sequence. Just what that. So the action like. sequence was a lot of fun. It was uh, it was probably the most challenging um, scenes in the movie for me, but also um, the most gratifying. Uh, I I've played sports my whole life, and so I was able to use some of those skills towards acting, which was a ton of fun for me. And it made me realize that even though I personally am not drawn towards action movies, I don't go to see a lot of action movies. I I would love to be in as many action movies as possible. I love the physicality of it all, and. Um, and I love that this was like my first like real fight in the movie or in real life. I'm not a bruiser. You might that might shock you, but uh, while we were doing the scene, it's it's technically fake, but like we're we're getting physical and you it's it's getting rough. You're rolling around on the ground. You're getting bruised up, and um, it was it was fun. You're not a bruiser. Good to know. <laughs> was there anything? Was there a good takeaway for you? Like a, a favorite thing you you took took from this film or learned? Let's see, let's see. I, um, I guess I took it as uh, another, another, like, uh, let me see, let me see, let me start again. Um, what's the best takeaway from this movie? I would say that it's, it's good to, um, to try a genre of movie that maybe you, you um, wouldn't naturally be drawn towards. You know, I, I do want to try a little bit of everything. You know, I've done primarily comedy up to this point, but I do feel just as confident with drama. And now I know that I would love to be in more action movies. And that is my takeaway. Good one. Why do you think Mr. Leterrier was a good choice for this? 
I think Louis was a great choice for this because obviously he's brilliant with visuals, um, and his stamp is all over the, all over this movie in that sense. But on top of that, this I feel like this is his most grounded movie that he's done to date. Um, in in terms of the fact that he it is slightly character driven, you know, you um, and and also this the story and the plot it is very intricate. And uh, if you if you don't have someone who knows exactly what they're doing, it's like all the twists and turns could feel contrived and all over the place, but he really put all the puzzle pieces together, um, which culminate in this very satisfying ending. Excellent. Hey, when can we see it? We can see it May 31st, and how many weeks is that? A week and a half-ish. Yeah, give or take. Good stuff. Cool. Perfect. You know, you get paid to do this. Good, good, You're the greatest. Good You're the greatest. You're almost done. I'm almost done. You guys are almost done.